a very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers in Christ. We thank our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ for giving this wonderful opportunity to study His wonderful words of life. Last week we studied about the Lord's second coming. I uh, hope uh, there is no doubts in that one. Uh, Muslim, do you have any doubts? Uh, no doubts, brother. Okay. We are supposed to study one more part. That is the rapture. We will be studying next week. Okay? Okay, brother. So, uh, so this week uh, we will be studying uh, something uh, about uh, the nation of uh, Israel. Because uh, uh, we know and we have studied uh, that uh, our Lord's uh, second coming uh, has uh, already happened. So one of the signs of his uh, uh, second coming, uh, that means second presence, uh, our Lord Jesus clearly tells forth uh, in Matthew 24 saying that, uh, Behold the fig tree, uh, learn from the parable of the fig tree. When uh, his branches is yet uh, tender and put it forth leaves, uh, you know that the summer is nigh. So identification that we are in the kingdom, uh, we are in the Lord's reign, identification that we are in uh, the Lord's presence. Uh, how to identify? Jesus gave as a sign to study and uh, learn from the parable of the victory. Now, what is this victory and which is this victory? <clears throat> we know uh, that uh, in the Bible, the nation of Israel is called as a victory in the Bible. So let us read Hosea 9 chapter verses uh, 10 brother. Uh, Hosea 9 10 brother. Okay, Muslim brother, you can read. Okay, brother. <clears throat> I I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your father as the first first trip in the fig tree at our first time, but they went to Balapur and separated themselves unto that same, and their abominations were according as they loved. So it says, I found Israel like a grapes in the wilderness, and I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at our first time. So, the fathers of the nation of Israel, I come to the fig, uh, you see, fig fruits, uh, you see, the first ripe. Then the fig tree uh, definitely represents uh, um, the nation of uh, Israel. Because uh, the fathers uh, means uh, the uh, you see the fig uh, fruits. So the fathers came from uh, Israel. The fruits uh, actually sprang up uh, from the uh, fig tree. So therefore, if you see uh, the fig tree in the Bible uh, represents uh, you see the nation of Israel. So why did Jesus tell us to learn from the parable of the fig tree? So we all know the parable doesn't have a, a direct meaning. It always has a symbolic meaning. So parable means it has got a complete secret uh, inner meaning in it. And uh, the fig tree represents the nation of Israel means uh, the nation of Israel. That means the fig tree was cursed at the last first advent. We all know very well once when Jesus was coming towards Jerusalem, he was very angry and he saw a fig tree. Uh, but there was no fruits uh, in that uh, fig tree. Uh, I hope you remember those incidents. Uh, Mausam brother and home brother? Yeah, yeah, brother. So when uh, Jesus went near, there was no fruit. So immediately Jesus cursed the fruit tree. So imagine why Jesus had to curse the fig tree. Instead of cursing it, uh, he could have blessed it and everybody could have the fruit and went off. But that one Jesus did to teach us a lesson saying that the fig tree represents actually the nation of Israel. So the nation of Israel, when Jesus saw from far, it was full with uh, flourishing with the leaves and everything. It was very blessed. But when Jesus came in sort of the fruits, like forefathers who have faith like Abraham, did not find uh, much fruit. So hence what happened? Instead of blessing it, he cursed it. So immediately, Immediately, at the very moment it got uh, completely dried up. So that represents the nation of Israel. Once Jesus was crucified, the nation of Israel was completely dried and cursed by God. It was totally scattered all over the world. But Jesus says, when you see the same fig tree sprouting again, remember you are very near to the kingdom of God. Therefore, our timepiece is the nation of Israel. So daily we see clock 
to see what time we are living. So, whether it is morning, whether it is evening or uh, you say afternoon. So, similarly, we need to observe the nation of Israel, especially today, what events we are uh, uh, seeing before our eyes. These are all the fulfillment of the prophecies. Today, Jerusalem is a very, very important place because it's a place that is very important to three types of people. One is uh, the Jews, one is the Arabs, you see, Islamians, the other is the Christians. So all the three people is very important. Therefore, the whole world is watching Israel today. You see, the world's timepiece, Israel. And moreover, huh, all the world, the Bible students, we are watching it very curiously because that is the where the Bible, you see, gives us a timeline where we are living. Okay, then Israel. Actually, the name Israel was given to Jacob. You see, Jacob, uh, when he fought with an angel the entire night, you see, that was the time that uh, Jacob was blessed and renamed as Israel. The name Israel means he that will rule as God. And Israel became a tribe at the death bed of Jacob when he called his 12 sons and blessed them. And you see the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel was formed. And they were in Egypt. And after the deliverance from Egypt, they came to the land of promise. And God gave them the judges for a period of 450 years. And God next gave them the kings after the period of judges, the people of Israel demanded for kings. And that is the time that uh, you see kings were given to Israel for a period of 513 years. But uh, you see, and many more favor was given to uh, Israel, all the covenants, uh, you see all the sacrifices, everything was given to the nation of Israel. But all this uh, ended when they crucified our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because the people of Israel clearly, you see, claimed you see, and they brought upon the curse upon themselves. Pilate, you see, recognized that Jesus is the Son of God and washed his hands. He clearly said, I have nothing to do with this man because he's an innocent man. I have nothing to do with this innocent blood, he said. But the people of Israel said, let his blood be upon us and our children and we will answer for it. You see, dear brethren, so that is when all the, you see, punishment from God came upon Israel. Let us read Matthew 27, 25. Uh, uh, home brother, can you read Matthew 27, 25? Okay, Muslim brother, please read Matthew 27, 25. Uh, okay, brother. Uh, Matthew 27, 25 is written like this. Then answered all the people and said his blood be on us and on our children. See? Let uh, his blood uh, be upon us and on our children. So same way happened. All the punishments, uh, you see, which God had determined to pour upon Israel came upon them. You see, the Romans uh, scattered the entire uh, Jewish population in all over the world because they knew very well that the Jewish people, if they had taken captivity, they will again regather in Israel. But they did not want this one to happen. Why? Because... They knew very well that if they are taken captivity, they will again gather to the homeland. So many times they were kept in, taken captivity, but they return again. But the Romans were so uh, much a hatred about the Jews that they did not want them to be gathered at all. Therefore, you see, dear brethren, they were scattered all over the world. This is again, you see, the fulfillment of the prophecy. Let us read Jeremiah 16, 13, brother. Home brother, you're there? Jeremiah 16, 13. You can read. I will read from his skin, okay? Okay. Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your father. And there shall we serve other gods day and night. Where I will not show you favor. Mm, you see? Oh. Wherefore will I cast you out of this land into a land you know not? 
neither your fathers you see went there see that means it was uh, to be taken to an unknown place uh, where none of the fathers lived there with them and there they will serve other gods means what uh, other rulers uh, their god would not show them favor at all it seems there with them next what happens verse 15 brother ha huh? but the lord lift the brood of the children of israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them and i will bring them again into their land that i gave unto their fathers ah you see he says but the lord again will bring them from the land of the north it seems sir that means where israel was scattered if you see the land of the north if you see in the world map the place which is northern to israel means all the european continent people all the european places the people of israel were scattered and god says they will be gathered from them you see in the, from that place to their homeland which god had given to you see their fathers why did god punish them verse 18 read brother verse 18 also and first i will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land they have filled my inheritance with the cackers of their data stable and abominable things see first i will recompense for the iniquity double because they have defiled my land therefore dear brethren before bringing them back to the captivity from the captivity back to the land of israel god would first punish them therefore this regathering of israel happened and ultimately they got their independence on may 14 1948 you see the promised land which god had promised to abraham saying lift up thy head to the north south east west wherever you keep the fort i will give you this entire land dear brethren that's what god promised to abraham therefore in this century the greatest miracle ever happened is the regathering of israel why why that is called as the greatest miracle even the greatest miracle than man going to moon because uh, dear brethren uh, you see to gather a nation after 2000 years with the same culture with the same faith and to the same place it is really not at all possible because you see so many people they migrate to different places and they keep adjust to, to that place and just mingle with that culture like for example if the uh, foreigners if they come to india what do they do they go to their you see uh, hindu temples and uh, other uh, gods and all they worship other gods and just mingle with those culture and forget about their uh, you see the culture that is how it is today and if somebody of our people they go to abroad or uh, america they get settled there you see and they get married to uh, you see their culture and they married and uh, believe in different gods so this is the condition today just for 50 60 years but imagine a nation that has to be gathered all over the world you see scattered for more than 2000 years with the same faith that is the greatest miracle so the favor began to come to israel since 1878 since 1878 you see the favor actually dropped on israel how see there was a russia turkish war you see we all know that uh, the land of turkey that means today what we have afghanistan you see and uh, iraq iran uh, saudi arabia all these places were called as the land of turkey you see the turkish land and we all know that ussr was there united soviet social republic and there was a war you see uh, between the russians um, and the turkish and that is the time that the britishers helped the turkish to win this war 
you see and then what happened was that uh, the entire turkey land was under the control of the british empire and that time you see the lord's grace huh? you see and that time the world powers uh, had made a you see union called as berlin congress of nations what is this berlin congress of nations today we have united nations so before this one came to existence initially it was a berlin congress of nations you see where all the world powers gathered to discuss what to do about this land of turkey how to distribute it you know and lord's grace was so that the main head you see in the berlin congress of nation was benjamin d israel he was a jew or else he was called as lord beaconsfield also so once uh, you see he had the power the first thing he granted was a little bit favor for the jews to go and regather to go and settle in the land of israel you see hence uh, the first jewish settlement was formed in 1878 at petta tikwa you see you can see the photos that was the original condition of israel petta tikwa only just a group of 11000 jewish people came and settled there it was such a worst condition that if anybody comes to israel within 11 days he, he was sure to get malaria that was the condition in israel but these small group of 11000 people they began to develop uh, you see israel hence uh, this uh, you see petta tikwa the first jewish settlement is called as the door of hope read osia 215 mosam brother can you read osia 215 okay brother osia 215 is written like this and i will give their give her her fine years from thence and the belly of acre of a door of hope and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the days when she came up out of the land of egypt see she shall sing as uh, she came out of the land of egypt it will be such a deliverance and uh, the valley of accor for the door of hope that was the place called the valley of accor you see and that was the door of hope for the jewish people because there began the first settlement so the land was completely infected but then they began you see the land of israel to develop read jeremiah 3244 brother uh, mosam brother read jeremiah 3244 and jeremiah 3310 mosam brother you there Yeah, brother Jeremiah thirty to forty four is written like this, but they said their abomin uh, abominations in the above uh, in the no, house no, no, which no. is Jeremiah thirty to forty four. Oh, sorry for that. Ah, uh, okay, thirty to forty four is written like this. Ah, uh, men shall buy fields for money, and subscribe evidence and seal them, and take. witnesses in the land of benjamin and in the place places about jerusalem and in the cities of juda and in the cities of the mountains in the cities of the valley and in the cities of the south for i will cause their captivity to return said the lord see the israel people actually brought their land from the arabs they did not get free of cost see they purchased it uh, they signed it with agreement uh, you see so the people of israel brought the land of israel uh, you see and how did they develop how was the land read jeremiah 33 10 brother uh thou said the lord and there shall be heard in this place which you say shall be desolate without men and without beast even in the cities of juda and in the state of jerusalem that are desolate without men and without inhabit inhabitant and without beast see how is the land uh, it is desolate without man without beast that was the condition of israel 
But this barren land, which actually no one was staying, not even the Palestinians, not even the Arabs, sir, they were staying. Just the land was there. They had to purchase that land from them. You see, and that is how they developed uh, the land of Israel. So, as uh, you see, the Israel was slowly developed. The father of a nation of uh, Israel, you see, Theodore Herzl, he began, uh, you see, a Zionist movement all over the world, where he began to publish pamphlets and in a newspaper, articles about regathering in Israel, bringing and reviving the hope of the Jewish people that they may gather, they may come and gather to the nation of Israel. So based on this one, based on his writings, based on his literature, based on his article, pamphlets and everything, you see many people came and back to the land of Israel. And that is the time that, uh, you see, the Balfour Declaration, you see, where the petition was given in 1917 saying, uh, uh, during the World War, First World War, you see, to the League of Nations, requesting them to grant the land of Israel officially, you see, to them. And this was obtained, you see, in uh, 1917, 1918, through Chain Weizmann. Chain Weizmann was the one who in invented the gunpowder formula. And because of him, you see, the First World War was won by the British Empire. You see, during that time, until such time, there was no gunpowder formula. Though there was uh, other uh, types of uh, bombs and all those things, and you know, firingis were there. But there was no gun, you see, and gun, uh, you see, uh, like uh, gunpowder bullets and all those things and all. But this formula was, uh, you see, invented by Chain Wiseman. And because of this one, the First World War was won by the British uh, and the time, the Britishers were so happy that uh, they requested Chine Weizmann, what do you want? Uh, you see, and immediately the Chine Weizmann requested uh, that they give this uh, land of Israel to the Jewish people. They are requested in the Balfour Declaration. You see, let that, uh, you see, land be granted uh, to the Jewish people. Imagine, dear brethren, if we were in that condition, imagine because of us, if the world war is won, and the world powers offer us, what do you want? What would we choose? We would selfishly choose what only we want. You see, a big house or full gold. You see, all luxuries in our life, what all we could ever dream. But Chain Weizmann never requested anything for himself. That is, you see, the patriotism of the Jewish people. He requested, please grant the Jewish people, the land which God had promised to them. You see, then General Allen B, he was the leader of the League of Nations and he was also Jew. You see, the one who requested, the one who asked, you see, both were Jews, then immediately that land was given to the Jewish people, Abraham. This is how slowly, you see, what happened? The nation of Israel began to develop. Let us read. Jeremiah 16, chapter 14 to 16, brother. Huh? Uh, okay, brother. Jeremiah 16, verse 14 to 16 is written like this. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets' prophecies lies in my name. I send them not, neither have I commanded them. Jeremiah, which you are reading? Which chapter? Jeremiah 16, 16 14. chapter 14 to 16. Sorry, brother. Uh, I said something like this. I'm so sorry. Uh, Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord lived, that brought of the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord lived, that brought of the children of Israel from the land of the north, and from the land whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land. And I gave unto their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Lord. And they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters. And they shall hunt them from every mountains and from every hill. 
and out of the holes of the rocks. Mm -hmm. How will God gather? In verse 16, it clearly says, Behold, I will send many fishes. Said the Lord, and they shall fish them. I will send many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, every hill, and every holes of the rock, it seems. So who is the fisherman? Wizard. Yes, Theodore Razal. Not literal fisherman. Jesus said, no. I will make you as fishers of men. Correct, no? Yeah. Similarly, the Jewish people were fished out from all over the world back to Israel. How? By Theodore Herzl. By his writings, by his movement, the Zionist movement, many Jewish people gathered to Israel. But this verse also says, God shall send many hunters. How will the hunter hunt? You see, they won't hunt very pleasantly. They will use harsh system to hunt them. So similarly, in the whole world, the Jewish people were hunted down by Hitler. You see, Hitler had so much of hatred on the Jewish people that he built the concentration camps all over, you see, Europe. And in each concentration camp, there was a gas chamber. You see, this is the photo of the gas chamber. In this small gas chamber, nearly around 15 by 10 feet uh, gas chamber, and height is not more than 7 feet, they used to compactly push more than 200 Jews and, uh, you see, and, uh, you see, were put uh, poisonous gas uh, inside the gas chamber. And gas chamber did not have any outlet at all. And they all used to, you see, uh, shout. Imagine, see, this is the condition. What is looks from inside once the gas chamber is locked. Not even a small, you see, place to uh, breathe also. The small hole only was left. Uh, in that one, from that one, the poisonous gas was left to your brother. And, and uh, you see, and after uh, all the Jewish people died, their bodies were taken to post-mortem crematorium. You see, and beyond upon these stretchers and all, you see, they used to take their uh, dead bodies and on this place, each and every dead Jewish people's body was post-mortem. Why? Because the Jewish people were very, very rich who all lived in Europe. So during the Second World War, you see, all the Jewish people were hunted down and brought to this uh, concentration camps uh, and uh, then knew that Hitler would kill them. And they would give nothing. So hence, they were so rich, they swallowed all their diamonds and gold. You see, uh, things uh, yeah, so they may be in their belly. Whenever they wanted, they can extract it. And Hitler came to know about this one. Hence, what happened? Each and every body of the Jewish people were totally, you see, post-mortem, an entire gold and diamond which was inside the body was removed. And after one, their carcasses were burnt continuously. You see, in this uh, crematorium, this was the burning system which was actually invented by, you see, Hitler. The German engineers invented more than 16 of such, uh, you see, uh, crematoriums in each and every concentration camps and it used to run continuously for four years. Not even one day it was off. Continuously bodies were burned and after the burning all the bodies, even the ashes were never discharged outside. They were all gathered under a place. You can see that place. This is still there in Poland. You see, all the ashes were gathered. Such a 60 lakh Jews were tortured and killed. They were all brought to the camps. In the camps, you see, all their goods were confiscated and they were, you see, allowed to sleep in this uh, barracks which had nothing, no facility was given to them. And only in one day, they were given half a cup of herbal tea, a little bit of soup, you see, and they were given only one slice of bread per day. And given, you see, only one glass of water per day. You see, apart from that one, even if they cry, if they shout, nothing was given to them. All their hairs, you see, was totally... You see, completely shaven off. And in those hairs, 
the israel is a uh, hair so the germans used to do carpet and other things and all which was necessary to their people and uh, you see the shoes uh, all the jewish people's so shoes were gathered and uh, even the bones and the skulls and uh, never left out uh, you see dear brethren this is the way uh, the jewish people were tortured and uh, the nazi uh, army they performed uh, many medical experiments uh, on the jewish captivities like for example what would happen if a man would uh, mingle with uh, animals uh, what would happen to them so those experiments were uh, actually uh, done upon uh, you see uh, the jewish children so today imagine in a laboratory if a new medicine is invented they usually test it on a mice so because it's a mammal so let, let us see what is going to happen to it then they will uh, at last uh, they will uh, give it uh, inject upon a man but here all the trials and tests were done on the jewish population you see they is to you see uh, dump the unborn children you see uh, they is to uh, kill their mother and uh, take out the unborn children and they is to uh, dump it out and not only that one you brethren uh, you know the paper weight of german army was a uh, unborn child's skull that was the paper weight of the german army they hated the jewish people so much from their hair they used to do carpets you see and uh, foot rugs and uh, the jewish people skin they used to use to make leather items for jewish army shoes uh, leather jackets uh, you see belt uh, hat uh, all those things uh, you see were made from the uh, jewish people and uh, the israel flag was used as a carpet uh, by the german army because of this heavy torture you know what happened all the jewish people they left everything whatever they had left everything they came home running to israel this was a fulfillment of god's prophecy in the bible read jeremiah 31 8 to 9 brother jeremiah 31 8 to 9 brother ah huh? okay brother jeremiah 31 8 to 9 behold i will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them the blind and the lame with them the blind and the lame the women with child and her that travels with child together a great company shall return neither uh it also brother uh, okay mm. they shall come with weeping and with uh, supplications will i lead them i will cause them to walk by the river of water in a slight straight way whether they shall not stumble for i am a father to israel and ephraim is my firstborn okay. how will the... god gather israel it is the woman the lame the blind you see the child and they that are in travel with a child they shall all come with him how will they come to israel will they come with laughter joy happiness no they shall come with weeping supplication that was the way they gathered to israel dear brethren they just wanted a safe place a place where they can just live you see that this all happened you see during the second world war you see and from then there was a great exodus the jewish people staying around all over the world they have been slowly gathering to their promised land you know recently in india also many years before there was a terrorist attack in uh, bombay you know which are the places that were targeted all jewish places and the jewish people who were staying in mumbai they also you see got and settled in israel you see and slowly you see as many many rich people began to gather to israel they began to develop israel 
there was no rain in Israel from 70 AD to 1878. In 1878, the first year exactly, you see, the rain began to come in the land of Israel. You see, see the difference before and now, earlier how it was and now how it is, just a period of, uh, you see, huh? 50, 60 years, uh, Israel is beautifully developed uh, compared to all the other nations. Uh, you see, Israel is today so developed uh, that in agriculture field, you see, this is the master. You see, we today we have drip irrigation, the sprinkler system. All these things uh, are invented by Israel. Earlier, just imagine just 40 years before, we didn't have, have such system. We need to go to the field, plow it, uh, then divert the water morning and evening need to supply water and all but today you see no what is required by just owning a tap even by report control handling it you can sit in the house and on the tap the water will go exactly to the plant how much ever is required only that much water will go you see that system is developed by israel you see the agriculture equipments, the tractors and various harvest equipments is all invented by whom? It's all invented by Israel. You see, earlier they used to take, you see, books and go and plow. Today, where is the system? You see, one man can plow more than 100 acres. You see, at a time, such beautiful things have been invented by Israel. Today, Israel is the great exporter of beautiful flowers in the world. And vegetables and fruits, you see, our vegetable compared to them and all is nothing. You see, their tomatoes are so fresh, if you just keep it outside on a table, it will stay fresh for seven days. Imagine if we keep our tomato, what will happen now? In two, three days, it will get rotten off. And not a good one, their size is also very, very good size. And we know about the hybrid fruits. Who actually invented these hybrid fruits? It is Israel. Why? Because this is all given in the Bible. When they went to the promised land, you see, they brought grapes on their shoulders. That was hybrid fruit. That is the promised land. You see, and the cattle, the cattle also, they outweigh the rest of the, you see, cattle all over the world. They are so healthy. You see, dear brethren, these are all naturally developed. Then how did Israel develop into such a nation in a short period. It was all because of the first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion. David Ben-Gurion was a very religious man and he believed the Bible very much. So once he became the Prime Minister, the first thing he did was that he gathered all the scientists, all the engineers, all the architects, you see, all the very, very highly educated people and he had a meeting. You know what he said? He said to develop Israel based on the information that is given in the Bible. Because the Bible clearly gives what all you can grow in which places. Based on that information, each and every places were identified scripturally. And in that place, that particular cultivation happened. And Israel developed to be a very strong nation. So let us see what is there in the promised land. Deuteronomy 8, chapter 7 to 9. Deuteronomy 8, chapter 7 to 9. Uh, brother, you're there? Um, home brother, you're there? Yes, for the Lord thy God bring there into a good land, a land of rocks, of water, of foundation, and depth that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive and honey, a land wherein the salt eat bread without scarceness, the salt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are idle, and out of whose hills saw mice dig brass. Mm -hmm. See, here it's clearly given what all will grow in Israel. Wheat, 
barley, wine, grapes, fig, pomegranate, that means fruits, olive, honey, then in whose land, in whose stone, there is iron and brass, it seems. That means, that is the signification that there are iron ore and brass ore and copper ore in Israel. Based on information, they, they developed Israel. You know, the only source of water for Israel is River Jordan. Why? That is also given in the Bible. Read Genesis 13.10. Read Brother Mosam Brother, Genesis 13.10. Okay, brother. This is 13 10. Yeah, this is 13 10. It's written like this. And Lot, Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the pl plain of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. As those comest comes onto Jor. See how is the neighboring places like uh, Jordan? It is like the Garden of Eden. Uh -huh. Where did you get the water? Well, water from River Jordan. Even today, you see the Israel water supply is supplied from River Jordan. You see, and moreover, the Bible gives information of so many wells. You see. Jacob digged a well, Abraham digged a well, Moses, they had a well. You see, and Jacob's well only Jesus drank water. This information is given in the Bible now. So based on that information, particularly that the exact places, what happened? They began to drill, bore, and began to extract water. You see, therefore, in the Bible, you should have read Bethsaida, you see, yes. Bethsheba. So what is the meaning of that beer? Beer. Yeah, they drink no beer. Beer means water. Beer means actually in the Hebrew language, it's water. You see? So water, that's the source of water. So hence they began to identify the source of water and all. And Bible gives information where, which plant and which, uh, you see, fruits will grow. Like for example, you see, Lebanon uh, is famous for what? Tell me, Leban, Lebanon, what will grow in Lebanon? Mm. Lebanon is oh. dry, dry fruits. Ah, no, that is uh, you are telling. What does the Bible say? Uh, Bible says Lebanon, ah. I think woods are good woods. Good wood, cedar. You see, cedar wood, cedar tree grows in Lebanon. Based on this information, they, they, you see the plant and the particular trees in those places. And uh, middle trees, Bible gives no. Middle trees are there. Then olive trees. Where does olive tree go? Mount of Olives. Uh -huh. So, Bible gives uh, information. Then, uh, Jesus is called as uh, Rose of Sharon. Correct? Huh? Yeah. So, so, Sharon is a place. In that particular place, what will grow? Roses, beautiful flowers will grow based on this information, biblical information. They, they develop Israel. You know, uh, who invented USB? USB means what? Uh? Universal serial bus port. Uh, 15, 20 years before, there is no USB at all. Uh, each and every component, electric and, uh, you see, gadget and all, they should have a different cable. We need to purchase that cable and the, the driver has to be purchased, installed, then only it will work. But today, that problem is solved by a universal serial bus port, common for all the devices. Who invented this technology? This is invented by the Jewish people. And you see, the pen drive. Yeah? So small memory chip. You can use, you can store huge data. Now who has invented this one? Huh? These are invented by Jewish people. Imagine how data has to be stored 20 years before, brother. You take a DVD. Huh? You have seen DVD, CD? You have seen? Yeah. Yes, brother. Ah, see, one DVD means only 4 GB. Yo, another 8 GB. Bring other two CDs. It burn. Okay means okay. Or else if something happens in between, throw it in the spin. But today, USB. So small pen drive. How much data? Then, eh? in our mobile, which battery you are using? Every day? Lithium. 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 See? Nippon battery. One time advertisement coming. Every day. Oh, ever ready. Charge red. 
all those things are of the past lithium battery so small battery it can store so much of power it can you see uh, long last uh, for 3 4 days uh, imagine who founded this technology this was by a jewish people and solar technology solar heater you see solar panels where you generate electricity all this technology was found by whom israel jewish people, people. Uh, you see now many rich jewish people are today doing very prime business in the us the top rich us citizens are the jewish people you see bill gates uh, bill gates microsoft uh, ceo he is a you see jew then levi's jeans you see no yeah what do you mean by levi is levi given in the bible levi yeah yeah 12 tribes one of the 12 tribes so levi's jeans bernard lewis he is a jew Lawrence Ellison, Bloomberg, you see, television, Oracle owner, you see, Dell company owner, Michael Dell, you see, Facebook owner, Mark Zuckerberg, Nike, you see, Intel company owner, Golden Arnold. These are all the Jewish people. I am giving you a little bit of sample example. That's all. You see, dear brethren, and the drones technology. Yeah? This is invented by you. Jewish people, there are more number of scientists in Israel than all the world scientists gathered together. You know, that is the knowledge of Israel. And Israel today has developed in such a way that it is compulsory that each and every Jewish citizen should work to study in army, to serve in army for two years. As soon as you finish the 10th class, the 11th and 12th, you're going to finish only in military. You see, today do we have such facility in our, this one? We can't even pay school fees, but they're compulsory you see, they had to serve two years. And such way, Israel developed rapidly an unemployment rate in Israel is less than 10%. But in the surrounding all the Arab nations, the unemployment rate is more than 60%. And as Israel began to develop from nothing to the topmost level in the whole world, all eyes came upon Israel. Then there was a man, his name is Yasser Arafat, who formed a league called as Palestinian Liberation Organization. And he claimed that the Jewish place is actually the place which belongs to the Palestine people. Still then, there were no Palestinians at all in that place. Nobody lived there. Once when Israel technology developed, they reached the top immediately. They began to claim and he formed organization. He fought for it. You see, dear brethren. And that is the time as Israel was developing, you see, in the British mandate, in the Balfour Declaration, they requested the land, no? See, yeah. actually, Israel had requested so much of land, but they got only 1% of the land. You can see the red portion, only that portion of the land was granted to Israel. The rest of the land, 99% of the land, was totally given to the Arabs, even 1%. I'm telling you about the United Nation partition plan. You see, yeah. only 1% was given. Why? Because that is the time that the oil wells were found in the Middle East. There was a great demand for oil. Until such time, there was no demand for oil at all because nobody used oil. Nobody used diesel, petrol, everything. They used to all use steam engine. Even the steamers, even the big boards, they should run on steam. There was no, there was no automobiles at all. But in the first world war only, all these things began to develop. Aeroplanes and all those things. So there was a great demand for fuel. They came to know that these fuel are extracted much only in the Middle East. That is the time the world powers put a lot of pressure. I am saying about the Arabs, they put a lot of pressure on the world powers so that Israel may be given as much less land as possible. But even then, Israel got their independence on May 14, 1948. The very next day, imagine, night they got independence, early morning, 6 o'clock, six surrounding nations, they attacked Israel 
and they all decided to push Israel into the sea. But by God's grace, Israel won the war. The ratio of army was 100 Arabs to one Jewish, you see, soldier. But at, uh, they won the war. And again, in a six-day war in 1967, that time also, all the Arabs uh, attacked uh, Israel, uh, deciding to destroy them as they're doing it today, no? You see, it was much more severe. But even then, you see, the Jewish people won, you see, the war. Therefore, the Jewish people are bulletproof. They are fireproof. They are waterproof. They are all proof because their protection is only from the Almighty God. Hence, you know, they are God's witnesses in this earth. They are the timepiece. They are the fig tree who is sprouting now. So this is the past. This is the present. But what is going to happen in the future? You see, we are seeing the terrible condition in Israel. So what is going to happen in the future? It is a preparation for the Third World War. But that's not the Third World War. It will go severe. It will go to a terrible peak. You see, but we are approaching that one. But that's not the Third World War. You see, if we, then in the future, what will happen? What does the Bible say? The Bible says all nations shall attack Israel. Not only few. Underline it, all nations. Read Zechariah 14, chapter 1 and 2, brother. Okay, brother. Zechariah. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, and the spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Wait. And the city. Underline. All nations. Today, have all the nations gathered again Jerusalem, brother? No. No. So only few nations. Imagine. All nations. See the condition of Israel then. What does it Bible say? Continue. Huh? And the city shall be taken. City shall be taken, brother. Today only a small portion of the city was taken. Next. And the house refilled. See? Houses spoiled. Today how many houses are spoiled? Only in the outskirts. The agriculture. You see? Huh? The farmers. Only those houses were spoiled. Not all the houses are. But it will be very terrible that the houses will spoil. Then, in the women vanished. See, women's ravished. Women's will be spoiled. Today, it is only a part of the women, children, they are spoiled. Correct, no? Yeah. But imagine a very large scale thing is going to happen in the future. And how it will be? Continue. Huh? And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. See, how many people were there? Half of the city. Today, only 220 people are gone to captivity. Imagine, only 220 yeah. people are captured. In that one, almost 50 people are released. But here it says, half of the city means what terrible war, brother. Entire half city will be gone. That means, it will be a verge where Israel will lose. Half of the city shall be destroyed. Half of the city shall be taken captivity. Then what will happen in Simsa? Huh? And the residue, residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. See? That means few people will be left in the city. Some people, those are the Orthodox Jewish people who will pray to the Lord for help. And during that time, none of the technology will work. None of the world power support claiming, oh, we are American or back home. We have so many rich people doing business in America. None of these things will work out. You know, today, you see, 
there is only one prime minister of this world who has a hotline connection to america president you know who is he that means hotline means what that if somebody calls on that line only the america president will lift the call you know there is only one president or prime minister in this world who can directly contact america president who is it that is uh, prime minister israel prime minister. Uh, israel prime minister if he calls the american president will directly attend the call not even his secretary such power israel is having so much of development you just go google it and see each and every invention of the 20th century is all done by the jewish people do you think their technology the arms the ammunition you see the trust their you see their their belief in their money and all this development uh, will it save them no none of these things will save them none of the rich people will save them none of the money that is the time that they will seek for god read ezekiel 3816 brother ezekiel 3816 and thus shall come up against my people of israel as a cloud to cover the land it ah, underline be. brother as a cloud covers the land imagine if a cloud covers a little cover the entire place will be in darkness similarly all the nations will cover today what has happened only from gaza 5000 missiles were launched at a time the iron dome did not work at all it did not go it did not know which to hit you see imagine the entire nations of this world will cover like a cloud means nothing can they do none of the technology neither laser nor iron doom nor the scud missile nothing will work hmm. it shall be in the later days and i will bring the against my land that the heathen may know me when i shall be sanctified in the o god before this dear eyes See? god only will cause this third world war not any arab not any jew this war will be done will be conducted by our lord god almighty why so that his name may be sanctified before the ethan that each and every gentile people may know that he is the one true god and that position the israel would not have no other option the only thing they will do they will cry for help from god read zechariah 1210 zechariah 1210 home brother can you read zechariah 1210 you have the bible with you okay most of the read zechariah 1210 uh, okay brother uh, zechariah 1210 and i will pour upon the house of david and upon the inhabitants of jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourn for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him mm. as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn oh, you see God shall pour out the spirit of supplication. That is the time God shall pour out the Holy Spirit upon Israel. Then their eyes and ears of understanding shall be open. Then that is the time they recognize Jesus, who is already present in the sky, ruling invisibly. They will recognize, oh, oh, Jesus is the one who is doing it. Then they will cry for Jesus. Even today, the Jewish people don't accept Jesus as Messiah, but yeah. they will cry in such a way. as if they lose their only begotten son if they lose their first born son how they will cry today you know how they are crying because their sons and daughters are taken away they crying same way they will cry for jesus that is the time that god 
will use this opportunity and bring and come and fight for the nation of Israel. How shall you fight? Read Zechariah 14.3. Now you read Zechariah 14.1, 14.2. gather all nations. Let us read Zechariah 14.3. Uh, home brother, Zechariah 14.3. Can you read? Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Ah, he will go and fight against those nations who came against Israel as he fought in the day of the battle. Uh -huh. How did God fight in the day of battle in the Old Testament? Uh, lot of examples are there. Whenever there is to be a war on Israel, they used to only pray to God. And go to the battle. By the time they go to the battle, the entire war was already finished. They just looted everything and came. Remember the uh, war upon uh, Midianites by the Gideon band? 300 people defeated 120,000 people. You see? They did not take any sword. They just blew the trumpet. You see? They broke their uh, you see, uh, uh, pictures and uh, they let the light shine. You see? Just uh, they did this one. Immediately what happened? There was a great confusion among the camp of Midianites. They stamped uh, each other and they killed each other. So by the time the band came to the valley, the war was over. This is how God is going to destroy the uh, enemies of Israel. No arms, no ambitions will be used. Clearly Israel will identify this is the end of the Lord. Gideon identified, oh, we have done nothing. This is the end of the Lord. Even Sennacherib, you see, huh? the Assyrian king, you see, they came to attack Israel. Ezekiel did not have any option. Just pray to the Lord. Lord, I don't know what to do. He is uh, just uh, huh? using your name in vain. He's blaspheming against you. He prayed to the Lord on that day. You see, in the night, the angel of the Lord came and destroyed 1,85,000 soldiers in one night. Imagine, dear brethren, same way, God will miraculously save Israel. You see, this is how Israel will be saved and their eyes will be opened. Oh, oh this is none of our technology. This is the supreme God who is doing this through his son who is already present in his second presence and ruling. That is how they will identify. Then what will happen? then God will make a covenant with Israel and forgive their sins. Jeremiah 31, brother. 31 to 34. Moses, brother, read. Jeremiah 31, chapter 31 to 34. Okay, brother. Jeremiah 31. Behold, the days... Come, said the Lord, that I will make a new uh, covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their father in the days that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which many covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. Hmm? But this this is covenant is not going to be like the law covenant. When they were delivered out of Egypt, God made the law covenant. What did the people do? They broke it. Moses himself broke the law. Second time they gave. Israel people broke the law, even though God gave it. Next, continue. How will this new covenant be? Huh? But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts. And will be their God, and they shall be my people. Aha! Uh -huh. This time, this new covenant, God won't write it on a tablet, on a stone. No, 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 not in a book, no stone. Where will God write? In their hearts, by heart. It shall be imprinted in their mind, in their heart. By their heart, they will trust the Lord. Uh -huh. Then they will be God's children. And God will be their God. Next. Huh? And they shall teach no more 
every man his neighbors and every man his brothers, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Sin no more. I will forgive the iniquity. That is the time that uh, you see they shall teach no more his neighbor. They will come know the Lord. Please understand the God. Please come and understand the Bible. Nobody will tell his name, sir. Each and everybody from the least even to the greatest. You see? From the highest uh, man to the lowest man. You see? Everybody we shall know the Lord is Himsa. When will this happen? This is going to happen in this kingdom. You see, dear brethren, how beautiful the Bible is there, you see. Beautiful promises uh, given in the Bible, dear brethren. This is going to happen in this kingdom. Everybody think that as soon as a man dies, you go to hell or heaven. Where does it say? Eh? In hell, God will make a covenant. In heaven, God will make a covenant. Eh? In heaven, who has to know the Lord? Everybody knows the Lord. This is going to be happening in here on earth. You see, God is never going to make any covenant with the people in heaven. Huh? Who people will go to heaven? Not everybody will go to heaven. Huh? Our Christians, first of all, they don't read the Bible. Nobody studies the Bible. Just simply uh, read the Bible and just pray for one minute and two minutes and go and live a worldly life. Just carry the Bible go every Sunday and go to the church and come. That's the Christian idea. What does the Bible say? Beautiful things are hidden in the Bible. This truth has to be understood. God is going to make a covenant with the entire nation of Israel. They shall be blessed. And you know, once the nation of Israel is blessed, then the whole world will recognize. In spite of we attacking them, the whole world attacking them, they have saved miraculously. How is it? Everybody will go to Israel and find out. How? Who saved you? What happened? That is the time. Israel will witness about one true God. Many things are there, dear brother, many things are there to speak upon this one. I can speak for more than two, three hours. It's not me, it's God's grace. You see, so many truths are there in the Bible. How they will identify, who will come up, how they will be saved. Everything is given in the Bible. Zechariah 12 chapter, Zechariah 8 chapter, Zechariah 14 chapter, full detailly. You see, then the whole world will realize, oh, there is a God in Israel who is going to solve all our problems and they will come to Israel. As today, they are sending ambassadors, no? You see, today what happened? There is a siege, a ceasefire in where? Israel. Who mediated? The Americans and the Saudi Arabians. They mediated. Uh -huh. Similarly, these Democrats will come. These ambassadors will come. From the whole world to Israel. Because Israel then will be the world capital. Read brother. Zechariah 8 chapter 21 to 23 brother. Huh. Okay brother. Zechariah uh, 8 21 22 23. Okay. Mm. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. A many people and a strong nation shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem, and to pray before the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass, the ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skit of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. You see, how many nations? Ten, ten nations. nations. All, ah, yeah. Ten nations shall, shall take hold of all languages. Which is ten nations? United nations. Ten means a complete number. You see, seven is a perfect number, but ten is a complete number. You see, therefore, ten virgins, huh? ten, the powerful nations of this world, they shall come out of all languages. They shall hold the skirt of a Jew. Uh -huh. Skirt of a Jew means what? Please help us. A woman held the, you see, the garment of Jesus. No? At least if I touch his garment, what will happen? I will be healed. This will be the reaction of the world world. 
after third world war let us go to israel we have heard that god is there no they're all facing problems at least let us turn to israel and see how god might bless us they will hear we will come in search of you we will come in search of your god for we have heard that god is with you that is the time the whole world will know who is there with israel god is there imagine you brother all these things will happen in heaven if everybody goes to hell and heaven huh what about this fulfillment of the prophecies this has to be understood therefore just having name a christian name doesn't matter at all no tom dick harry joseph daniel job no use let your name be anything you should have the faith on word of god give your ears to listen to his words be attentive be alert be like christ you need to go to heaven you see and be with our lord not simply yeah. everybody think there are lot of sufferings in this world once if we die we can live comfortably we are live comfortably eh god is uh, not taking the people to heaven a few people to heaven to live comfortable life no they have got lot of work continuously without rest they have to do work what work work like god the god of israel does he sleep brother no does he slumber no he is not lazy that means he is always attentive such character god's children should be having now are we having that one are we having laziness carelessness these are all the character and the deception of the devil today is deceive the whole world thinking some other things we show from the bible only but things what not irrelevant in the bible satan is very clever in quoting the scriptures he quoted for jesus only huh will he not quote us our christians are very expert they think oh, you you know everything hallelujah amen oh lord lord what does bible say he that says lord 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 not everybody who says lord lord shall go to heaven we should understand and stand for the truth leave all these things you see when we know that if these things are false we should leave it you see when we know that this is bad we should leave it when if you know that lies is there we should leave it not stick on to the same thing so many things are there imagine what are things are happening in this world this is a clear picture in the bible hence israel will be the future world capital what things are happening in this world it is a beautiful warning for us you know what the door for the heavenly calling is closing very shortly brother so if you need to make a calling election sure this is the time if you need to go inside for the heavenly salvation this is the time or else happily we can come in the worldly salvation when the whole world will be resurrected but uh, we won't be having the opportunity to see our wonderful god who has made a beautiful plan who loved us more than his son you see what gratitude are we showing to such a god dear brethren this is the truth of the bible okay so you have any doubts brother mohsam brother no not brother 